Here are the third version of the Level 2 Spellphabet workbooks. These two books are identical except one is the Teacher Clinician Edition which you can make up to 30 copies of so it costs a little bit more and one is the Parent Aid Edition which you only need uh, you can only make five copies of. Um, if you're a teacher and you only have five kids that you need to um, work um, through this workbook then just get this one. And uh, let's have a look at what's inside. So first of all there's a contents page, you can freeze frame that and have a look at it at your own leisure. And then um, if we turn to, there's some instructions, if we turn to the first page, what we're learning first is digraphs, so we're learning ch. So this is a new sound that wasn't in the previous workbook, book one. And so on the basis that when we introduce new stuff, we have to make everything else a bit easier. I'm not asking kids yet to write the whole word. They just write the ch and one other thing. So chin, chat, so they just got to write ch -a, and chip and chess. And then at the end, rich. Um, and then once they've got through those three sound words, we start to put it into four. So lunch lunge so they've got to write four sounds there uh, three sounds there in the four sound word belch hope you enjoy that picture and bench and so on and then turn over and that's where they have to write the whole word with this new consonant combination ch and then um, the TCH at the end of words is now introduced um, early in the sequence in Sounds Right, so I've included it here. And um, yeah, being able to go through and remember that mostly when we have atch, itch, itch, och, och words, we have TCH at the end, it's just which, much, such, touch, which that we don't, which the choosing kind of which. Then shh, introducing that, and again just writing that and a little bit more of the words, then writing all the words, then contrasting ch and sh, because they're very, very close, similar sounds, in fact, ch is made up of a t and a sh, so kids get them very confused, and then introducing th, as in this and that, and also um, the, the soft version, so there's two ways to pronounce that, th, like in thigh and th, like in thy, um, and there's not many words, so they're um, intermingled. And then um, some k words like back and neck and duck, where the k is written with a ck at the end. And then noticing that in words like silk and desk and um, dusk, we don't put ck after a consonant. We only put ck after a vowel. Then, after a short vowel. And then um, core, which is actually, we don't write CW or KW in English, we write this. William the Conqueror or someone is to blame for that. And so being able to use, um, write that correctly, that's a new consonant. So um, again, it's got the starting point and how to draw, how to, how, how to write it, how to form it. Um, and uh, there's not a lot of words like that. That's a quiff, <laughs> lovely hairdo thing. Um, I, I uh, had to find words. There's not many words that have got this code. Um, and then, uh, mm, like in king, which is another sound in English that we don't have a special letter for. And uh, so then writing the whole word and then uh, realising that that mm in bank and bunk, we don't write the G, we write NK, so dunk and honk. So sometimes mm is with just N when it's before a K. And then what, like in when and which, which in the olden days people said when and which, and some posh people still do. And then we're moving on into um, adding another more theme. So this time it's ing, so camping and dressing. Firstly, you just write the base word in, the ing is already there. And then you've got to write the whole thing with the, with the um, ing. Then this stable final syllable, all, so ankle, candle, jungle, was a suffix in the olden days, but you can't really argue for that with these kind of words now. Um, it is in a few, like sparkle. And then um, v, v, E for the end of words. So this is something that's not in the sounds right sequence, but I find kids get stuck on. So I've, it's hard to find enough words to put on a 12 on a page, but hopefully kids can manage that and understand that when we write V at the end of words, we just write V, E, not just, not just letter V. And then we're working now on um, instead of introducing extra code on writing longer words. So starting with some um, compound words. So these are all CVC compounds. So two CVC words pushed together, laptop, catnip, cobweb. Uh, first write the first syllable, then write the last syllable, then write the whole word. Um, and then some with consonant blends in the base words. 
write the first syllable, write the last syllable, now write the whole long word. So that's quite a lot of writing for kids who have been reluctant writers. Uh, a few more compounds there. And then once we've done those compound words, we start working on more suffixes. So this is ES plural, two boxes. We don't just write box with an S because we wouldn't hear there's a sound at the end of box. So we wouldn't hear that if we put another S on the end. So for these kind of words like matches and dishes, we put ES, not just S. Kids need to know that. The kids that I work with really need that explicitly taught. Mainstream kids, maybe they figure that out themselves. But because the kids that I work with often have weak language, they need much more explicit teaching about this stuff. Um, I used to think they didn't, but uh, I was wrong. <laughs> and so I've learned. Uh, it stretches. This is a third person verb. So he, she or it stretches. Um, and uh, again, we put ES, not just S. And then er, as in um, fresh er, and bold er, and cold er. Um, we just say uh, fresher and colder, and so forth. But when we're writing it, we have to say er to remember how to spell it. So this is actually a new spelling, that er, um, but it's just teaching it as a suffix in the um, first instance, and then we'll look at its use in other words. This is really common. And then the est, so freshest, strongest, and, and coldest. So really we say um, freshest and boldest, but we have to know if it's a comparative word, comparing like the, 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 the most, it means the most, um, then we write est, where it is, is distinct from things like artist and dentist, where it's an ist, means the person that does it. So understanding that that spelling also carries a meaning. Then uh, possessive, so apostrophe S, um, adding that to different words, and then understanding that apostrophe S also goes on words that end in S, and we say the bosses and the dresses, frill. And then understanding that if you make something plural, the possessive goes at the end. So the cats, dishes, and the, jack the kids, jacket. So you write kid, make it plural, and then put the apostrophe on. And that's something that Lots of us, including many, many adults, make mistakes with. Um, so just trying to clear that up. And then this E crunchy, as in uh, this is making words into an adjective. So dust this shelf, it's dusty and it's a bit messy. So the word, these are all base words in English and you can put a Y on them to make them into an adjective. And then a lot of words, that Y at the end is not an adjectival one. So understanding that something that looks like a suffix, sometimes it's not. It's just um, a, representing a sound, not a meaning. Very, the E is not a meaningful part. Um, and then trying some three syllable words that have got um, some unstressed bits. So factory, in fact, in factory, we often just say factory, but you need to say the word slowly and say factory when you're spelling it or else you won't get all the letters. So trying to teach kids this spelling voice approach where you um, break the word up and say every syllable the way it's spelt. Um, these are agent nouns, so the jester does the jesting and the catcher does the catching and the singer does the singing and that's another usage of ER. So we've got big bigger and then we've also got this, the person that does it or the thing that does it, the blender does the blending and the printer does the printing. So when you hear a word like that and wonder how to spell it, it's probably ER. Then um, uh, adding ES plurals to words that end in Y, we first have to change copy into copies with an I, and then we put the ES on. So starting to look at ways that you join suffixes and being quite explicit about how that works. Uh, then um, comparative, um, er or um, superlative est, so the angry S to whatever, um, and making sure that you change that Y into an I before you add ER or EST. Then uh, a page of contractions, because that's something that also gets a bit glossed over sometimes. And so knowing that hadn't is the same as had not and didn't is the same as did not and being able to um, realise that that apostrophe is a different kind of apostrophe from the possessive one. Then doubling. When you do change get into getting, you have to double the T. I'm not explaining a lot here about why we do that. We'll learn about that when we learn long vowels and we learn about 
um, taping and tapping and how you have to have a double after a short vowel to preserve the vowel. Um, but here we're just practicing doing it and adding vowel suffixes. So those vowel suffixes, er, est, ing and e, you've got to add them to the end of the word. Um, so listen to the word and then think, how do I spell that suffix? Then um, some, um, some words without, um, that don't need doubling. When you write folding, you don't double the D because there's already another consonant there. So that's a common problem that kids have. Once they've learned to double the final consonant, they double it everywhere. And they need to know it's only when there's one vowel and one consonant and it's a stressed final syllable. That's when you double. In single syllable words, obviously, they're all stressed. Then a possessive um, with names so that um, kids can understand that, you know, Will's cricket set has an apostrophe S or whatever. And then EN. Now, this is not the inflectional suffix EN as in take taken. I don't, there aren't enough words at, with this sort of code to be able to include that in this book, but all the other inflectional suffixes are in here. But it is EN as in make, as in fatten and freshen, um, madden, thicken. So it means to make. And then um, adding a mixture of suffixes to the end of a word and changing the Y into I or doubling the final consonant if need be. So applying that knowledge that you've learned on the previous pages and then looking at a few consonant suffixes. And so um, with these ones, we don't double the D before a consonant suffix. It's only before a vowel suffix that you add, you, you double the final letter. But you do change the Y into an I before a, um, a consonant suffix, typically. Not always, because this is English. Hey? Then stress, a little bit of work on word stress. So here, polish and salon and nutmeg, they're both stressed syllables. You can hear the vowels. There's no uh vowel, this unstressed vowel in those kind of words. Writing the first syllables, writing the last syllables, writing the whole word. And then, can't get it to open. Then some words that have got, oh, ick. Um, there's a lot of words that have ick at the end. We don't write CK. That's um, when they're two syllable words or some three foot syllable words. We just write IC. So getting the hang of that and starting to think about writing a syllable and working at a bigger level than just the single phoneme. Um, these words, goblin, cutlets, finished, magnet. We just say nut, but when we spell it, we must say magnet. And um, so writing the first syllable, um, the stressed one, then writing the unstressed syllable, then writing the whole word. So I'm really trying to break this down with every new concept. We go back to basics and there's no other cognitive load. So you can go quite fast um, and hopefully it'll be error free learning. These ones are stressed at the beginning. So um, dismiss and uh, What's that one? I can't remember what that one is. <laughs> and uh, expand and consult. So these ones, oh sorry, stressed at the end. Um, so sometimes we have final syllable stress in English. Dismiss distress. Oh, there you go. It's there. Um, so learning that not all words are stressed at the beginning. And then ones like suspect and um, possess and transmit. Um, that are followed by ones where you can have this could be two different things. It could be conduct or conduct. So depending on the stress, um, it will be either a noun or a, or a well in that case it's a, it's a noun, but um, changing a noun into a verb typically. So that's a present and he is presenting, but we spell them the same. Um, so those are homophones. Um, and shifting the stress changes the meaning of them. And then the last thing in this book is some three syllable words, some of which we drop a syllable out when we're saying them often. So chocolate, we'll say chocolate, but you've got to know choc o late. Fantastic, different. It's not just different. So you can't rely on the sound of a word, a long word, for knowing how to spell it. You must see it and you must break it up into syllables and write every syllable saying it the way it's spelled. So hopefully this workbook gets more of those kind of habits happening in kids before they then dive into learning about other vowels. And at the back there's a cheat sheet, so you rip this out or you can take photos on your phone if you don't want to rip, um, of the bit that you're doing each day. And the idea is that you do each page very fast or you do a set of pages a day um, and really try to get proficient with the spellings in this book. So I'd love to hear from anybody who's got feedback or thoughts on it and I hope it's useful to you.